Um, I mentioned to you earlier that we're just going to take a couple minutes, um, actually about 10 minutes, so don't get rattled about that, um, and talk with you about what's coming up as far as our church and giving and the challenges we're facing there in the upcoming year. So if you reach in your pew in front of you, you need to pull this out now, all right? So go ahead and just grab this. Uh, there should be more than enough for each family there. Um, you might have to share them, um, but you want to pull out the thing that says Vision Giving Plan 2017. And here's what we're going to do. Um, Scott's going to take a moment and tell you about some of what's here. Um, Jeff, as one of our elders, is going to tell you about some of the financial uh, opportunities and challenges. And then I'm going to take just a few minutes and tell you what we'd like for you to do with us. Okay? So go ahead, Scott, and introduce us to what we're going to talk about. Well, we have uh, much to be praising God for uh, in 2016, and sometimes we have uh, short-term memory issues when it comes to all that God has blessed us with, but we saw God do a lot of great things in 2016. Um, definitely one of the highlights was our 25th anniversary, and all the things that were entailed on that, and just looking back in the last 25 years and seeing all that God is doing. But one of the awesome things about being in God's work is we aren't just looking at the past and patting ourselves in the back for whatever reason, um, God wants us looking forward also. And so we're looking forward to 2017 and asking God what's next. And just wanted to reflect a little bit on some of the things that we have seen um, God do and, and God is doing right now. So if you could turn to the page in your vision giving plan that has adult ministry in it. Um, Near the back there, adult ministries, right before the page, it says gospel partnerships. Um, sometimes um, we forget the scope of our adult ministry here, but, you know, uh, Jeff, Phil, as I was just thinking today about, uh, on any given week, how many adults that we're ministering to here in the church. Did you know that each week there are over 150 women in here that are being ministered to? through one of our ladies' Bible studies, or through um, mops being every other week, but uh, over 150 women at different times in our church that are minist being ministered to with God's word. Man, that is just amazing. And if we had time, we could share some of the stories of just some of the life change and the reach into the community from our ladies' ministries. Um, it's awesome to be a part of that, and you can see these things that are detailed on the screen. Our men's ministries are really moving forward and have some great traction right now uh, with 12th Man meeting Tuesday mornings and Men of Faith meeting Thursday nights. Uh, man, we got some awesome things that are, that are going on here that we can really be praising um, the Lord for. Um, one of the things, and uh, you can turn to the page that talks about, go back one page, uh, that... Uh, Youth Ministries, right in the middle there. Um, one of the things that I really noticed about our church when I first got here is that we have a very young church. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. Um, we've got a lot of young people here. Um, and we've got a great youth ministry um, led up by our youth director, Justin Carlton. Um, the stuff that these guys are doing, we probably don't realize the depth uh, to which our young people are actually being taught. Um, and as we as elders uh, talk with um, the youth ministry team and find out what's going on and what's being shared with our young people, there's some real grounding that's happening with our young people. They're not getting fluff on a week-to-week -week basis. They are understanding their faith and giving opportunity to live out their faith which is really important for, for teens. So discipleship, as you see here uh, in the pamphlet, isn't just a buzzword. It's a word that they actually live by God's grace. On average, 40 students attend uh, a weekly third place, which is what we call youth group. And 23% of our greater community are between the ages of 14 and 18. So there is much opportunity here. If you could go uh, to the back there, right beside adult ministries, and look at gospel partnerships, Gospel Partnerships slash Missions. So this is our opportunities to reach out. And um, you would see that evidenced by things like mission trips to Haiti, mission trips to Brazil, um, what we just did with uh, Pastor AJ and Cassie and reaching out into our own community. Um, we see this as being a major priority for us. Uh, not just with our 31 
missionaries and ministries that we are ministering with and partnering with in 13 countries, um, but also right here in our own uh, area. Uh, we see this as being uh, critical to our vision. Uh, finally, here in, in my section here, um, might just talk about building real quick, but children's ministry. Uh, you could turn to that page, which is near the front, children's ministry. Um, this is definitely something that is a major part of what we're doing here at Fellowship Bible Church. Every year we share the gospel with over 600 children. Wow, that is honestly amazing as I, as I read that number. Each week, about 130 kids are here um, learning more about Christ and the gospel through ministries like Awana. BBS saw over 300 children attend in 2016. Um, and the opportunity is great. In our community, there are over 67,000 children. Wow. What an opportunity we have right here as a church to reach families, to reach kids with the gospel. Quick question for you. How many of you here um, are parents of a child in grade 7 or under? Let me see your hands. Put your hands up. Nice and high. Okay, that is a good chunk of our church. That looks like that could be about 50% of our church. That's a major part of our church. Now, um, one of the things that we really see as important is having um, an ongoing ministry right here working on staff with children and our children's leaders. Uh, that's why um, we as elders have really been praying um, and getting input on us hiring a children's pastor or a next generation pastor. Why would that be important? Well, I remember back when I was in high school, um, the new ministry craze was junior high. And great, if you were a really hip uh, youth ministry, hip, you had junior high. All right. Well, it's interesting um, how ministry shifts and changes because junior high definitely is important. But for all you parents out there, I want you to think about the kids in your home right now that are in grade four, five, and six. I really think grades five and six is the new junior high because of things they're exposed to. Uh, because where media and our culture is going, these kids, every year, that cultural creep just gets lower and lower. And one of our ministry imperatives has to be helping these kids that are in grades four, five, and six bridge that gap right into grades seven, eight, and high school. We see this as being a very important part of our church right now. And so because of that, um, much of, um, some of what we're going to be sharing with you as far as the finances are concerned is in relationship to uh, hiring a next generation or a children's pastor. Um, not to take over all of our children's ministries, but to just come alongside and help. We really see this as being critical and important. Um, won't go into a ton of detail right now on staff and property because Jeff's going to hit some more of that also, but um, this addition of adding another salary uh, to our budget definitely uh, has an impact, and also the continuation of our accelerated mortgage um, reduction has an impact on our budget. And uh, to go into some more detail on that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jeff. All right. Thank you, Scott, for that reminder as we look back on 2016 and the impact that this church has had. Uh, it, is, it is important to kind of have that in, in perspective. You also will remember we reintroduced the vision for the church, and that is the forward-looking part of what we want to accomplish. And, of course, the budget is important in laying out how we're going to accomplish that. Um, and so that's, you may recall, uh, Tim presented some financials to you a few weeks ago and said we were working on the budget, we're finalizing a few things, and we're about to bring that forward. So that's really uh, what we want to put in front of you today. And so here's a, a snapshot of how it breaks down. 
And it kind of struck me when I looked at this. I'm like, wow, ministry's cheap. Um, it's not really, but in order to do that ministry, um, you have to have all of these other pieces in place. Uh, and so we have a pretty sizable church budget here. And one of the things that we are doing is instead of going out for a full 12-year budget, 12-month budget, full-year budget, uh, we are planning a six-month budget. Uh, and you may recall uh, one of the primary drivers for that is to shift our, our budgeting process to more closely align to kind of the, the, the school year cycle and, and move the fiscal, fiscal year. Um, so we're putting forth a six-month budget. These are the numbers. You can see how these items break down um, in the different categories that Scott just talked about, as well as what's in the pamphlet here. So a uh, couple of points. Uh, this will allow us to fulfill all of the various things that we are currently doing, as well as execute better on the vision that we have. It includes a planned hiring of the children's pastor that Scott mentioned. Um, we don't exactly know the timeline for that yet, but we've got it uh, incorporated into the budget. It'll also include the accelerated reduction of our mortgage. Um, and actually, I'm going to go back and just mention that. With the accelerated plan that we have for the mortgage, see that nice big line item there for the mortgage? If we continue our accelerated payments, that entire bar will disappear in two and a half years. That's not that far away. Um, yeah, and that's really, that's one of the reasons we're really focused on trying to uh, pay down that mortgage as fast as we can, uh, because look at what that will free up uh, for the rest of, of the budget. Uh, and an increase in our gospel partnerships or ministries line, or uh, missions line. So this is uh, where we want to engage you in the process. Our average weekly giving has been around $18,000 um, for some time now. This budget that we are putting forward to you requires an average weekly giving of 21400 That's a significant difference. But we took the past you know, few weeks to really look at this budget uh, with the assistance from the deacons, work with the elders. We looked at what God is calling us to accomplish here, the opportunity that we have to reach our community. Uh, and we believe this is what God wants us to do. This is the role that he is calling FBC to play in the community. But this money has to come from somewhere. It's not going to just magically appear. And so we're at going to ask you that in the process of affirming this budget to also carefully look at how you can make it a reality and, and partner in that process. So we're confident going forward that this is, this is what God has in plan for us and that this is going to, to work and we're stepping out in faith that um, you know, God's people will respond. At the same time, we feel we need to be responsible in communicating to you what happens if that $18,000 number doesn't change um, because we will have to, to understand what we'll do in that situation. So first of all, no need to worry. We have, uh, we have funds in reserve in our, in our bank account. And of course, we can make up a shortfall temporarily. Um, can't go on indefinitely, but um, you know, we're not in any, any dire, dire danger here. Um, but I wanted to, to point that out. I also wanted to make a correction because when Tim did get up here and present the, the funds for last year, he communicated to you that we had a net shortfall of $43,000 for 2016. Unfortunately, uh, that overlooked a few end of year payments, including a mortgage payment. So our actual shortfall for 2016 was larger, and I wanted to issue a, use this opportunity to issue a correction. Our shortfall for last year was a total of $65,000. Um, obviously, we don't want to continue that. That was funded from our bank account, um, but wanted to, to clarify that. So if we continue with this shortfall, what happens? Well, some of these are really... Uh, hard to mess with, in particular the, the buildings fund, there's, uh, those, fix, those expenses are largely fixed. Uh, we have to pay for the utilities, for the building and upkeep and other operational expenses. But if we find 
uh, you know, a few months from now that we're not having the income that we need, the first places we can look, we can look at that mortgage prepayment, which of course hurts our opportunity to pay it off in two and a half years. And we can, uh, you know, delay the hiring of a children's pastor, which delays the need for that additional expense in the staff line. Unfortunately, this doesn't get us to close the gap. So if we're still seeing this gap, really the only other places we have to draw from are going to be with our ministry line, and it's pretty small, so you can't cut very much there anyway. And then we would be forced to look to dip into uh, and cut back on our, our missionary support, our support of other, other gospel partnerships. So again, this is not what we anticipate happening but we feel that we wanted you to understand how we are approaching this budgeting process um, as things play out. But uh, we're really looking forward in faith that this is what God's calling us to do and that we won't have to, uh, won't have to be looking at this chart. Thanks, uh, Jeff. Um, real quickly, I hope you've heard in just a few minutes here this morning, um, both vision and reality. Okay? So that was the goal. And that should cause you not to panic, but to say, I do see the vision. Um, Phil, I understand if there's 67,000 children in our community and we reach 600, we got a lot of work left to do. And I recognize that how Fellowship Bible Church has ministered to me and I've, it's been able to minister to others. I want to participate in that. So here's what we're asking you to do. In that, in that uh, little brochure, you're going to find an envelope. And in that envelope, it's going to have a card with it. And that card's going to have a couple of steps, actually five steps for you. You can actually pull that card out if you want now so I can explain it to you. Uh, first step is read through the vision giving plan document and ask God what your part should be, okay? And that's what we're asking you to do. Um, prayerfully consider what God would have you do. We've included the second idea there is that um, there may be a time we'd like for you to engage with us in a time of prayer and fasting. This is a big issue. It's a big issue because we want to go forward, but we're going to need God to provide additional funds to go forward. So we have two days listed there for prayer and fasting. We encourage you to be um, doing that with us, not in a panic sense, but in a discerning the will of God sense. Um, that's what we'd really see in those two. Number three, uh, seek out an elder or a deacon. Um, if you have questions about uh, this process or the details of the vision giving plan, we want you to know what you're doing and not simply just jump into it. And uh, number four, after having prayed with us, fill in this card on the back and turn it in on our special commitment Sunday that'll be February 5th. If you're away, you can send it into the church office ahead of time. So if you turn the card over, you're gonna see my or our commitment. Notice the first part of that. Having prayerfully considered my part financially for the 2017 budget, my monthly increase will be. Um, let me note a couple things about the card. There is no place for you to sign your name. We don't wanna know, okay? We do wanna know that you prayed about it and that God has laid it on your heart. We believe the Spirit of God would be sufficient to provide the accountability. It's in an envelope. We're not looking for, to know any of who's giving what, which we don't know. We simply want you to be given the opportunity to say, hey, I prayed about this, and I'd like to be a part, okay? And then uh, that brings us to, uh, to number five. We want you to trust God for his provision as we move forward and as you give, right? So we ask for a monthly increase. Some of you may give weekly. Some of you may give when you're paid every other month or something like that. We ask for a monthly increase beyond what you're regularly giving for you to pray about that so that you could help us understand whether or not it's God's will for us to go forward in this way or what portion of it we could go forward in. Let me tell you a quick story that involves uh, you and it involves five young people. Um, these five young people you heard from on our 25th anniversary. Um, what puts them all in common is that they are actively living out their faith in environments like the inner city of Philadelphia, pastoring, Glassboro, um, working with children in Camden. Justin, of course, is here. Sean's going to Japan. The other thing that makes it and puts them all in common is that they all were once fifth and sixth graders here. Right? And because Fellowship Bible Church ministered to them and effectively ministered to them, they have chosen to go on and, and do what they have done. 15 years ago, this is the part that includes you. Um, we cut the parameters out of this building in an alfalfa hay field, and we asked people to prayerfully consider and simply write on a card what they might give beyond what they were presently giving. They gave in a three-year commitment, not a one-year commitment, what we're asking from our congregation now. They gave in a three-year commitment, and 15 years later, you sit in the building that is a testimony of their faith 
Many of them gave even though they did not know how they were going to continue to uphold that pattern, but they went forward in faith and trusted God to provide. We're asking you to consider what fifth and sixth graders fill those slides 15 years from now. Okay? Because again, I'll remind you, if we don't accurately invest in the next generation, Fellowship Bible Church doesn't go forward, it begins to slide backward. So this is a prayerful opportunity for you 15 years from now. Our fifth and sixth graders are going to be 26, 27 years of age. They're going to be at this age where they're actively engaged in ministry, and we want you to partner in that with us. Jeff, we'd love to have you just ask the Lord's blessing on this effort and that he would touch our people's hearts and lives and in the decisions he'd have them make. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we, we give you thanks for your work that you have done here at Fellowship Bible Church. We give you praise for the blessings that we saw reflected in the 25th year celebration of Fellowship Bible Church and its ministry here. We look forward to the 25 years, to the next 25 years of its ministry. And uh, I thank you for the labor that uh, so many people have put in to cast the vision, put forth the budget, and put in programs so that we can achieve it. Uh, so we thank you for, for their service, and we look forward to your blessing of our efforts. As we consider how we may each participate in achieving this vision, participating in this budget, uh, we pray that you will lay on our hearts the role that we can play, the financial role, the participatory role, the assistance role. Uh, there's there's lot, a lot for us to be done. There's a lot that you are calling us to do to continue to reach this community with the saving words and the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we pray, Lord, that we will be open to that. You will lay on our hearts what role we should play. Um, and we look forward to the blessings that you will bring forth through that, uh, for we know that uh, we are just vessels uh, and that you, you do the work. We praise you for that, Lord, and uh, submit 2017 to, uh, to you. In your name, amen.